Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about two-dimensional kinematics using the normal tangential coordinate system. So for this we are still talking about curvilinear motion just like we were with the rectangular coordinate system. So curvilinear motion is any motion that follows a curved path. Um, planar motion uh, in 2D uh, is any motion that follows a curved path in that the curve lies in a single plane. Uh, so we dealt with uh, two dimensions with rectangular systems. This is going to be another way to deal with uh, 2D motion. So for 2D motion, we had our rectangular coordinate system, which we already talked about, where we have a fixed origin point and a fixed axis, and we kind of measure the particle moving relative to that fixed axis. With our normal tangential coordinates, we're going to have our coordinate system fixed to the object that is moving around. So that uh, the coordinate system is going to move with the object that moves around and it's going to rotate as that object rotates. Uh, so if you think about sitting in a car uh, and you're driving around, assuming you're zero and assuming you're measuring everything relative to yourself, you're using a normal tangential coordinate system in that case. Uh, our last option, which we're going to talk about later, is the polar coordinate system where we have a uh, fixed origin point we're measuring everything from, but the coordinate system is going to rotate around to track the object that we're looking at. All right, so getting into the normal tangential coordinate system. Uh, the way it works uh, is uh, we have some origin point and some p, some point p, and we are the origin point. Uh, so position is actually going to be zero. Uh, and we are going to set up a coordinate system such that the direction we're currently traveling in, so thinking about our car exa example again, uh, if I look out the front windshield, the direction I'm traveling, that's the T direction. And the normal direction is always going to be 90 degrees counterclockwise from that direction. Uh, so we've got our T, I've got our N direction set up, uh, and our position is just zero. Uh, zero in the N direction, zero in the T direction, we are the origin point. So position's not terribly interesting. Uh, if we want to find the velocity, we would need to take the derivative of this function here. So derivative uh, it's going to get a little more complicated than the rectangular coordinate system because our coordinate system is rotating uh, as the body moves around. So this results in the following. So if I were to take the derivative of that first part, I would wind up with the following. So the velocity in the t direction, uh, and that's because the even though it position zero, I still am going to have some speed uh, in the t direction, so that stays there. Uh, but I also have uh, this from the product rule, this part times the derivative of my ut unit vector. So I don't know what that is yet, but we're going to talk about that here in a second. So derivative of, or derivative of 0, which is my velocity in the t, uh, times ut, plus 0 times the derivative of ut. So ut dot, that is our time derivative. All right, so same thing, product rule is going to break up the second part. Uh, so I wind up with the following down here, uh, and I can simplify this whole mess to v times ut because a lot of parts of this are zero. So right here, I've got zero times ut dot, zero times un dot, so those parts that both disappear. And I've also defined my coordinate system, so I'm always traveling in the t direction. So my velocity is always in the t direction, which means the normal component of my velocity is always zero. So this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. I'm only left with the first part of my equation. So that's my velocity, some speed in the tangential direction. All right, so now if I want to take, find the acceleration vector, I would need to take the derivative of the velocity vector. So the velocity vector, if I take the derivative, I would wind up with the following. So I'm going to have v dot, the derivative of the first part, times the second part from our product rule, uh, plus the velocity times the derivative of our second part, which is ut. So ut dot, uh, it doesn't have a zero in front of it anymore, so that's going to be something we need to worry about. All right, so what is the derivative of a unit vector? How do we take the derivative of a unit vector? Um, and we can think about the derivative of a unit vector uh, as being the velocity of a tip of a vector as it rotates. So here I've drawn two coordinate systems, the black one is the initial coordinate system and some short time later 
I've rotated by some small angle d theta. Uh, and so the derivative of ut going from here to here would be the vector going from the tip of the black vector to the tip of the blue vector. Uh, similar, the derivative of un would be the vector going from here to here. Uh, I'm concerned about ut because that's the one I need to actually find. So um, to find, I need a magnitude and direction for that vector. So if theta is really small, like we do in calculus, we're approaching the limit as the, d theta is equal to zero, um, the direction of that, that red vector, is going more or less in the n direction. Um, and so it's going to be going exactly in the n direction as d theta gets very, very close to zero. Uh, so that's the direction of that red vector. And the magnitude uh, is going to be equal to the rate of change of theta. Um, so you know, apart on a rotating body, uh, it's going to be radius times angular velocity. Our radius is 1 because it's a unit vector. So the angular velocity, uh, theta dot, measured in radians per second, is going to be the magnitude of that vector, the d ut. Uh, the derivative of the ut vector. So overall, uh, ut dot, or so the time derivative of ut is going to be theta dot for the magnitude and un for the direction. So I've gone and I've switched from ut to un directions here. But now this doesn't have a dot over it. It's not a derivative. It's just a direction. All right. So I can plug that back into my formula over here. So this is my original formula. I had v dot in the ut direction plus v times ut dot. All right, so if I plug in theta dot times un, un uh, for my this piece right here, I'm going to have two pieces to acceleration. So v dot in the ut direction and v theta dot in the un direction. All right, and intuitively, we go back to our car example, uh, there's two pieces to acceleration. So if I want to feel acceleration in the t direction, kind of the acceleration in the direction looking out my front window, uh, I would press on the gas pedal or press on the brake. Uh, that is v dot. That is our v dot component to acceleration. So the other kind of acceleration I can feel uh, is related to my speed and the rate at which I'm turning. So if I were to go very fast into a tight corner, I would feel a very strong acceleration in my end direction. And if you are in your car and you turn the steering wheel real fast, you can feel that. You can feel a, uh, that centrifugal acceleration going one way or the other uh, as you turn the wheel. So that's the two pieces to my tangential, or sorry, my normal tangential uh, acceleration. All right, I can make one last substitution. So theta dot, that v times theta dot, the velocity times the rate at which I am turning, uh, is also going to be equal to the speed over the radius of curvature. So if I know not necessarily the rate at which I'm turning, but the geometry of the, the turn that I'm going into, uh, v divided by the radius of curvature rho uh, is going to be the same as theta dot. Uh, and I substitute that in, so I've got two v's, v squared. So the second piece right here is another way to think about it. So I've still got the kind of brake or accelerator part of my acceleration. But if I take my velocity squared and I divide it by the radius of the curve that I'm going around, that's another way to quantify the acceleration I would experience in the n direction. So this is a valid uh, version of acceleration. But this is also a valid version of acceleration in the normal and tangential coordinates. So I can break this all down. Those were normal and tangential components. If I uh, have my so positions, I don't have to worry about because they're both 0. Uh, but velocity, so velocity in the t direction was whatever my speed is, v. Velocity in the n direction was always equal to 0. For acceleration, the acceleration in the tangential direction is v dot, the rate of change of speed, due to, again, the accelerator or the brake kind of effect. Uh, or in the normal direction, my acceleration in that direction uh, is going to be v times theta dot, so speed times the rate at which I'm turning, or speed squared divided by the radius of the turn I'm going into. All right, so those are the various components that I have for velocity and acceleration. And all of these, it's important to remember that they're not just 
these are still just coordinate directions. They're not x and y, but I can break things down into n and t pieces. So imagine I've got my car, I've got accelerometer data here, uh, and this is the acceleration vector that I'm given. So I could still take that acceleration vector and break it down to normal and tangential components, just like I would take something and break it down to x and y, uh, you know, using sines and cosines. Uh, and I also can go backwards. So um, if I know, so if I solve for a n and a t, uh, and I want to know the overall magnitude of the acceleration, I can use Pythagorean theorem. So a n squared plus a t squared, take the square root of that whole thing, that would give me the magnitude of the acceleration. I can use the inverse tangent function to find the angle here. So if I want to know what is the general angle, I'm going to be feeling I'm going to be thrown back into the seat uh, and also a little bit to the left, what is the angle of that? I can use inverse tangent function just like I did with x and y as well. So that's all I have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again.